Retaliation is a must. I know. The fear Sydney's deadly gang wars could be about to get worse. Investigators say they're at a tipping point. Police are investigating whether a 17-year-old boy could be the latest victim of Sydney's so-called postcode gang wars. 13 murders in 18 months and a warning. The worst is yet to come. Social media fame is now a driver of the violence. We've all known about Melbourne's gangland war. And this is Sydney's modern version. And our area is our family. Anyone that goes against us is going against our family. In Sydney, Australia, gangs of teenagers are enforcing the reputation of their territories by any means necessary, no matter how violent. The battles between opposing areas have become known as the postcode wars, meaning if a member from another postcode is found within your own, it's on site and no rules apply. Gang members have committed countless drive-by shootings, stabbings, and killings all in the effort to protect their territory. Over the past four years, six people have been killed in the crossfire, with many more hospitalized and imprisoned. And sadly, many of those killed were under the age of 20. While members claim their actions are a matter of pride, police believe that gangs are a breeding ground for organized crime networks with drug dealing, weapons trades, and dirty money being exchanged frequently. They allege that gang members are recruited when they are young and impressionable, so they won't put up a fight when asked to carry out a violent attack. Most of the teenagers have become involved in petty crimes in an effort to support their families, who are living in some of the most impoverished areas of Sydney. Gang members prey on these naive teens and offer them money and a flashy lifestyle in exchange for attacking or kidnapping members of opposing drug syndicates who are threatening their territory. So how much money can these kids actually earn? In an interview with some active members from one gang, they stated that for a kidnapping, you're looking at 50k and above. A drive-by shooting is a minimum of 20 to 25k. A murder depends on the name though, because of the revenge that might come with it. A big player, you're looking at a minimum of 250k. When asked why they became involved in such violent activities, they said, we started young. We had to chase the money to look after those back home and we had to feed ourselves. So we took that road. Um, we find that young people um, that don't have access to food or clothing or education um, or sporting activities, they might just need that mentor and maybe someone else to help them um, get that connectivity. The youngest members of the groups are often the first to be given up when the police come knocking. The results being a higher percentage of youth incarceration, in particular for violent crimes like stabbings and serious assaults. In an attempt to provide alternative options to the teens who might be approached to join a gang, law enforcement and social workers have set up an outreach program to try and engage the teens in more positive community action. They help them pay off any fines and encourage them to get back in school to further their education. They also try to work with the teenagers to show them that young people from different postcodes are just like them and they have more in common than they might think. It's hoped that these type of initiatives will help to reduce the violence these kids are exposed to and provide them with better options to help their families get ahead instead of turning to a life of crime. Y'all know what it is. Stay the fuck out of trouble. We fight for your area. And as dumb as that sounds to most people for us out here, it's um, something to die for, you know. Man, I was proud and still am proud, man, you know. And that's why I can tell why these kids are doing these things out here. You know, they're just continuing that same culture, but now it's like I'm older and I know, understand there's a bigger picture than postcodes.